All right, how's it going? It's uh, Rogue Meatwad and Digital Pants coming back at you. This is like four or five. Uh, we don't have Matt with us this time from last podcast, but uh, hopefully we'll get him back on here soon. But uh, <clears throat> in a previous podcast, it was uh, a day or two before Titanfall came out. We talked about it and we were very inebriated. At least me and Matt were. Eugene was feeding us drinks all night. And... Sobriety's a bit? <laughs> yes. So now, it is two weeks out from that? I think so. Possibly three. Three, yeah. Two or three weeks out from uh, Titanfall dropping. And uh, very enjoyable. It's, uh, I don't know, like, you haven't played it as much as I have. I'm on, like, Gen 5, but... Uh, no, I'm in the 40s. Be all right. Yeah, but, I mean, like, it, it's almost stale. I mean, granted, it's new, new shit, and, but, I mean, I still have fun with it. I don't even fucking touch Call of Duty anymore. I, mean, I have to still play Battlefield, like, if no one else is on, just because that's kind of my, my I don't give a fuck about game. Well, it's not like Call of Duty uh, got any better. <laughs> oh, yeah, and they just released the, uh, the new trailer for the new DLC, so I'll probably play that here in, like, two days when it drops. Probably for about a day or two, and then I will be done with it for a while again. But, uh, you're asking me about the generations, mm-hmm. the genning. Because uh, you don't prestige anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck prestige. No, but, uh, yeah, like, I was I was telling you off a uh, off quarter that there... Wow, I'm drawing a blank. Oh, like, every time you gen, like, after your first one, when you actually generate... Yeah. Uh, there's there's things you have to do in order to go from two to three, three to four, four to five, and so on. Uh, but by what I stopped uh, talking about was I'm stuck at level fifty on five because uh, one of the gener- generation requirements is to get fifty ejecting pilot kills. Ooh. Yeah. So does that mean you have to make these kills as you're falling down from the ejection, or when you're when you're no Titan blows up? <laughs> no, when the opposing player ejects from their Titan. Oh, you gotta plank them when they're falling. Yes, or rising, which is a huge. It's hard enough, but there's actually a subreddit now to where people are are going. If you see people Gen Five, just drop out of your Titan. Just jump out of it. Don't eject because they need to get. <laughs> so, or there's people that auto eject. So as soon as they they auto eject, they cloak. Which is, it's still not bad because I've you know I've been able to peg a few people that cloak. You just kind of you just kind of yeah, spray yeah, and gotta, pray. Or yeah, and you gotta see if you can see that vapor trail from their rocket pack. Yeah. But <clears throat> it fucking sucks, dude. Like all the rest are kind of cool. I mean, you go through them pretty fast because all the other ones aren't really that bad to do. But what does suck is uh well of course the one i'm on right now but god damn it's a goddamn stalemate oh well steve steve just finished it yesterday i've only got like 18 (laughs) (laughs) you got a long road ahead of you oh yeah and uh, supposedly they're gonna patch it to where you only need five so i'll probably hit 49 and be done for the night or like i just won't be oh i'm gonna not until I get this. Yeah, and good. then the next day it'll patch it, and it'll, I'll be like, fuck! <laughs> well, I don't know. They, they should keep it at 50, because, you know, the people that did do it, you slap in their face. Well, no, they're actually, the people that ended up doing it, or end up doing it before they patch it, will be recognized in some way, shape, or form. They didn't say how. Like, maybe you'll get, like, a, a huge dick, like, swinging off your Titan well, or that's... something. <laughs> I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to change things around. Just leave it be. It's just because, oh, five, five pilot ejects were, yeah, whatever. It's stupid. Leave it as it is because the fact, the fact that you're getting that more moving on to the next gen is to show how big your, your uh, geek wiener is or whatever. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what it is. And, but still, like, why did, like, I'm cool with them keeping it at 50, but why would they do it, like, mid, like, gens like at five why don't they just do it at nine like yeah. to go on to the last one like because it makes no fucking sense to me well you know over time we're gonna, you know what i just want more maps i mean there, there's more maps more titans did you see the uh, april fool's joke no uh 
Optimus Prime is a dumb. <laughs> <laughs> no, but did you see the the, the Google Maps uh, April Fools? Which one? The, the, the Pokemon. Pokemon's. Fuck yeah, that's fucking that, retarded, uh, dude. Tell me what though. That'd be funny as hell. I never got into Pokemon, but for the you know for the generation after us, I was big into it. That had to have been a, a fucking treat for about five minutes until whoops, April Fools. Yeah, I mean, I was never big into Pokemon, and still I am not going to be. I mean, there's a big following for it. Oh, no, there's a huge following for it, but I'm just like, that's kind of dumb. Like, as soon as I saw that, I was like, of course, that's April Fool's. Of course, when I saw the Titanfall Optimus Prime, just because how shitty it looked, I knew it was a joke. <laughs> <clears throat> well, you get to play as Mark Wahlberg as a pilot, too. That'd be a treat. <laughs> yeah. I actually wouldn't mind that, but he's got to be like Wahlberg from Two Gun, so. Uh, well, I don't know. He don't just know. winks at people. Did you see that movie? Yes, I did. Yeah, he's like, I only wink at people that are my bitch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that movie is something else. But yeah. anyways, I don't know. I, I I haven't had a generation. I'm in the 40s still, Titanfall. I got, my gripe is the campaign mode. It. All it is is just playing, hey guys, guess what? Here's some uh, attrition, here's some uh, hold, hold, you know, hold down. Yeah, hard point domination, whatever you want to yeah, call it. domination, <clears throat> whatever the fuck. And, you know, I just sit there and I think, what? There is no story. Yeah, there's talking in between the, the, the load screens or wait time for loading and all that. But there is no... There's no story. No, there's, there's there's no there's no weight to anything. You can't even tell who's supposed to be the, yeah, the I don't good know guys or the good bad. Guy or bad guy. So what? The IMC and the militia? Like I, I can't even tell who's who's the bad guys. Uh, what what kills me is the fact that you have to go through the campaign twice just so you can get the the was it the Atlas, the Ogre Titan. The Ogre and the Strider. Well, you go through the first time through the first camp your first rodeo of the campaign and you get the Strider Titan. And then you gotta go again and play as the other side to get the Ogre Titan. And, you know, I'm actually content with the Atlas. Like, yeah. I, I don't really care for dashing around and running around as the Strider. And the Ogre, yeah, he's a beefcake, but there's really not much transition. And, you know, you know the Strider's fast, but he take, you know. Yeah, but you can take more damage as the Ogre, though. Well, that's what I mean. The, the Atlas is just all around, and, you know, if I'm gonna bail out of the fucker, I'm gonna bail out. Like I'll I'll take I'll take a beating with my extra you know the extra was it extra core damage or you receive extra core damage. With no, the, you give uh, with the atlas. It's uh, yeah, core damage. So you put out three times the amount of damage that you normally do. Wasn't there one where you you take less damage? Uh, that would be the ogre with uh, uh power shield power core. So it it buffs your shield to like twice. What they should be. Gotcha. Well, either way, and the Strider is <laughs> is just infinite uh, dash core. I I just I just rather bail out of my bail out of my Titan. And then all actually I actually like hopping out of my Titan and having it follow me around. Yeah, that's kind of fun. I do that here and there. I, I do it a lot because a lot of times I'll get you know I'll get stuck in my Titan or I'm battling three of them and I'm like, fuck waiting for the for the. For the you know my battery or whatever my life to go down just to eject out because most of the times I get caught up in a battle of three titans and I'm getting ripped out of there so yeah. I'd rather just follow it around and just hit him with uh I don't know if, I don't know the anti titan weapon that's uh like a pulse not a pulse rifle um it's a it's a straight arrow beam it's orange it look looks like a Spartan laser. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think that is the. It's called the pulse rifle. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Either way, I, I kind of like it because it does a lot of damage, and if my titans follow me around, or attacking another titan, I can you know I can strafe around, and you know I'd rather do more damage doing that. The only thing I don't like is the charge up time. Yeah, that is kind of suck. I don't know. It, it's probably the best anti titan weapon. I do like I did like the anti titan like machine gun like thing. Yeah, but that thing's garbage. Though. Yeah, it don't do shit for damage. No, and actually I think if you were to use it on a pilot, it takes more kills than it would a regular anti personnel gun. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, so it's that's fucking pointless. Uh, I, I'm still having fun with it though. I still like using the single the, the single shot rifle with a suppressor on it. 
I hate having to plug someone seven times to kill them, but price to pay for a suppressor, in my opinion. I don't think the suppressor does shit, but... Well, it, it you, keeps you, you off radar. It's supposed to, but they find me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a problem. I mean, I use the carbine, like, especially now since I've got, like, the challenges I have complete, except for the one on Gen 5, and I can't get any more experience, so I'm just using overpowered shit that I'm good with, so... But so you still like the game, though? It's still fun, Oh, yeah, it? it's fun. It, the game's fun, and it, I, I only, well, my only downfall to it is it's just, you know, it's multiplayer only. Like, like, I wish I could just go over, you know, go someplace and be like, you know, a campaign mission would be nice for this game. I think, I think when they make the second one, it will, uh, they'll flesh shit out more. Well, but, I mean, coming into it, that's gonna because be the campaign was like, a, like the last minute thing that they did. They're like, well, people will probably bitch, blah, blah, blah. So just kind of like half-ass put one together. Well, my whole, it is half-ass put together. My gripe is, is, like I said, I you can't play it unless you're online. Like, you can't, like, remember Perfect Dark for 64? Yeah. You can still play it without friends. You just set the bots. Yeah, so. And, well, and plus everything's six on six. So why the fuck not put a bot mode in? Yeah, I mean, there's fucking AI running around the map the entire time anyway, so. Yeah. That's how, I mean, how else, I'd say it'd be great for practice. Like, you can set the, you know, you know, easy, medium, hard, expert, whatever. Yeah, like, different. like Call of Duty's do. <laughs> yeah. You know, for, for, uh, the, the classification of character that you, you know, for the bots. I mean, you can customize the bots to be, you know, if as much as you can customize your character, you can customize the bots. Yeah, I, to I totally agree with that. I mean, but, like I said, uh... It's not it's not a perfect game by any means, but it's definitely a fresh breath of air that uh multiplayer games need. I mean like Call of Duty's getting super stale. Uh Battlefield still keeps it interesting. Uh everyone mainly says, because they don't come out with new shit every Well everyone says game. that you know, Battlefield's this or that, you know, in my opinion. I played it on three sixty. I have no ambition to buy it on the Xbox One. Uh Call of Duty is going to be Call of Duty, and, you know, in my opinion, until they get some games pumping out, the Xbox One is just stale for me right now. Yeah, I mean, they got some cool, like, I've been, uh, what was it, actually right before you called me, uh, I was playing Strider, the remake they did. Well, you can get that on the 360 arcade as well. Yeah. But that, that's my gripe. Yeah, they really, they had, really didn't even have, like, even arcade-wise, they haven't had anything that's... I don't really, really stand out, like, just for the Xbox One. I mean, basically, the only good thing that the Xbox One has fucking pumped out that's just for them is Titanfall. If, if in my opinion, if, if Microsoft would get their shit together, <clears throat> anything available in the arcade that you could pick up on the 360, you know, minus the fact that they don't want to cross-platform shit, the arcade games, all the arcade games are cross-platform. You play Pac-Man for your fucking, from your first Xbox, and then you're able to buy it for, you know, then they made it for 360 as well. I mean, there's not one console. This is the first console I've come across where you can't play fucking original Pac-Man. Don't get me wrong if they're trying to change it to break the mold of things, but if you want me to get more play out of my system, offer me arcade. Like, I yeah, will Well, I mean... Yeah, they, they're, kind of, they're kind of lacking right now. With with the options and games, I haven't had to put on put my hands on a PS4 yet. But if if my understanding is right, I think that you can still buy shit off the the PlayStation Network to like old old, old their their version of the arcade. Yeah, I mean that kind of pisses me off because I I have a lot of games I bought arcade on the arcade on the 360 that I can't re-download onto my one now. Yeah, because they don't. Because they don't want to reprogram the fucking games, which I can't imagine is that hard. I mean, I'm not a programmer, but... I can, I can understand the way the lingo is between one system to another. It's one thing. But but I see no change in, like, well, if we can put Pac-Man on this and then put Pac-Man on that, how hard could it be just to... Here's a little patch. Yeah, that's, that's all I, I think it, it probably could or should be. I don't need Pac-Man in high def. Make it pixelated. Make it old school. Fucking done. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, 
Any other games? Well, uh, Thief came out, never touched it. Yeah, don't. Do not. <laughs> Do not. The, the concept was fucking great. Uh, well, I mean, you can go it's through the super... whole game without killing anyone, and that that's, makes the game really challenging from what I understand. It's hard enough. I mean, granted, there's going to be someone out there that does it. I, I, that's fine. Good on them. But they've... I mean, some of the parts of the game is, like, really beautiful, and the storyline's somewhat followable. <laughs> uh... So there's but, nothing linear to it. You're just a, you're just a thief stealing shit with the ability to kill or not kill people. Yeah, it's. I mean, there's a story. Some shit goes down at the beginning of the game. There's there's a bunch of like lore, like and like side missions that kind of flesh out the city, which that is called the city. <laughs> uh, Welcome to the city. But at least like in Batman, they called it Arkham. Yeah, I mean, but like, I mean, Doom City, but you're in the Doom is like such a pain in the ass, and like you can't unlock certain side missions unless you do a certain mission in certain parameters, which is fucking stupid. Well, I mean, it got, it kind of opens up gameplay, but at the same time, it closes gameplay. I, I mean, it just gives you more. I guess it'd be a cheap way of saying instead of DLC, if you do this, we'll let you do that. And... Yeah, I mean, there's like. There's like shit. There's like candles throughout the maps. Like, and if you hit them with a fire arrow, like you get whispers. And like, I don't even know what the fuck they're for. Uh, the the cinematics, if it's done CG, good. Now, if it's in-game engine, it's fucking shit tier. I mean, like horrible. Like they're talking, their mouths are tearing. The the voice the voices don't even sync up with the lips. Not oh, even fucking close. That's terrible. <laughs> The sound barely <laughs> syncs up. And they did a couple <coughs> cool things, but it just... It's this shit. It is a fucking shit game. And I would re I would not recommend anyone to buy it. No, I... Like, I, I, I ended up buying it and I traded it in. Like, Titanfall cost me 22 bucks because I did that, but... Well, see, for me, I, I'm, I'm a sucker for, for purchasing online and, you know, I don't get no trading value. So... For me, what I get is what I get, and I'm stuck with it. Um, maybe that's something, well, I don't even care about trading. There's no such thing as trading and downloaded shit. No. Because you own the rights to whatever, and it's dedicated to your console. I mean, it'll go with you wherever, but, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I, was, uh, I don't there, think it's dedicated to your console. I think it's dedicated to your profile. Profile, yeah. What's nice is, well, I downloaded the demo for one of the games that I think it came out with the release. Uh... Lego uh, Marvel Super Heroes. Yeah. Now, if you're a fan of any of the Lego Lego Star Wars or any of the Lego games all together, I mean, they put a lot into the game to make it look pretty and all Lego style and everything. Now on the three six or on the on the three sixty is all right, you know. The CG scenes were you know as pretty as they could be, but when you got in the game, you saw the pixelation and everything else. Yeah. Now, I played the demo for it, and the demo alone. The CG scenes and in-game play, I could not tell the difference of. It was beautiful. Really, just seamless. Yeah. I mean, I heard it was fun. Like. I mean, you see, it's it's not that it's seamless, but the quality of the game you're playing is the same as the quality of the CG you're receiving. So everything looks pretty as a whole. Like, and all the like, anything you'll see as a CG scene is going to look as good as the in-game play. So, is there actually voices to this one, or are they still? grunting and shit. No, no, they're not mumbling anymore. Okay. They're, they're talking. They're, they have their superheroes. Well, I mean, like, I, the only one well, I, I Batman did... Batman was the first time they introduced voices to the characters. See, the only one I played was the, uh, the Star Wars uh, saga. Okay, well, that one... And that, they were just like, huh? Or it was just like, not even grumbling. It would just kind of just be like actions, and then they fuck off. Well, when they came to, I think it was Lego Batman 2, they introduced... Vo they, they just let allowed voice acting to come in, and... And, and and it adds to it, like like for us fanboys, like last, in our in our previous podcast, if it ever gets released, it'll get uh, there. It'll get there. We were talking about how uh, how Marvel characters in the universe of the movie theaters will never will never see Spider Man ever be with with uh, the Avengers or things like that. Yeah, probably never ever, and that's that's just. Or any, you or you will not see it, like any any cross platforms in the movies now with the Lego series that you could play a Spider Man 
as part of the Avengers. It was great. Because, I mean, I believe Spider-Man was part of the Avengers. Yeah. Yeah, Spider-Man is one of the Avengers. So, when well, I, how, I, I'm wondering how they've licensed that. It's licensed all under Lego. Now, they don't have to follow the movie world. They, have, they only have to follow the comic world. Because they, they own the rights in the Lego universe. Yeah. Well, I, I don't see them trying to make an Avengers game, like, outside, you know, like, the Lego shit. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so, I don't... So, yeah, I, I guess I... Yeah, I guess I'm an idiot. Yeah, because the movie rights, that's why we'll never see... Because Sony owns the rights to Spider-Man. Exactly. Uh, like, here, here's a fine example. <clears throat> I... I uh, I just watched uh, uh, an, an animated movie that just came out. It was uh, the I believe it was Black Widow and the Punisher. Oh yeah, I've I've seen previews for that. I've been wanting to watch it. I I checked it out uh, last week. Great movie. Will we, will we ever see that? No, it's, I mean it's an offshoot of the Avengers, but but like I, Punisher never joined. I, but what was nice was Punisher. This, does mercenary work for? Does it? Yeah. For but, shield, like yeah, just like Deadpool. Because him and Nick Fury yeah. have a past of some sort. Yeah. Who knows what? But what was nice was I got to see the Avengers and the Punisher in one fucking cinema, you know, animated movie. Because I mean, it was strictly you know centralized around Black Widow and the Punisher, but at the end I got to see the Hulk. Uh, I got to see Iron Man. I got to see Thor. And and that's it. I mean, that's not all of the Avengers, but guess what? You'll never see it in the movie world. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, <clears throat> I'll never see like... Frank Castle hanging out with uh, you know Tony Stark. <laughs> no, if if that does happen, it'd probably be if they, and which would be awesome, if they did a Civil War movie. But actually, they can't do that because Spider Man. <laughs> but yeah, Spider Man's kind of <laughs> locked in with Sony there. Because he plays a key, a, like a big part. I mean, in the civil, in the uh, in the civil war. Spoiler: I think Spider-Man dies. No, not in that. Oh. No, Captain America does at the end of it. Oh. There's like the main, the main chunk of Civil War, which is like the story of it, and then they have like prelude to Civil War, where they take like Spider-Man and different, like the X-Men and like all these other people, like leading up to the Civil War, and then they take like afterwards. Like Captain America and all this shit, and uh, that's where Captain America gets killed. Well, since we're transitioning to movies and comics, this Friday is the going to be the premiere of uh, Captain America 2, Winter Soldier. I hear it's actually supposed to, just by critics that have seen it so far, they've said it's the best Marvel movie yet. Well, who knows? I I like the Avengers as it was. Our, our, our uh, new third member disagrees with it because he's not. A, I don't. I think he's just anti Joss Whedon. Yeah. But I liked Firefly and all that. I mean, don't get me wrong. He writes for TV shows, but the Avengers is a movie. I don't see it being done any other way. I don't care if you're a critic or not. I mean, if if you think you can write it better, then do it. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, like in this, without Matt being here, it's not fair because we can't hear him. I'm not trying to, yeah, I'm not shit talking. Yeah. I'm, I know it's a good thing. Neither, neither am I, but. Uh, he has he has an abstract point of view of things, and he thinks this should be done this way. He <laughs> likes the things the way he likes his things. Now, in my opinion, I'm more accepting of how I get to receive my things. And, you know, we all have our own opinions of this or that. Um, a fine example is he was never a fan of Old Boy. He got to see the remake of Old Boy, and he thinks it's utter shit. Yeah, I think I saw he posted on Facebook about that. Exactly. And now, in my opinion, I saw the Korean version, and the Korean version for me was nice because, like, I didn't expect anything like that uh, or anything, like, the, the big twist in the end. And I'll let you discover that one on your own unless I spoiled it last time. But either way, it'll probably get spoiled here shortly. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, and I uh, just watched the remake of Old Boy. Me and you had talked about it before. Uh, so I already kind of knew what was going to happen, but I thought it was still a good movie. Like, yeah, it's gory. Yeah, there's, like, some unbelievable fight scenes, but... I like Josh Brolin for, you know, I like Josh Brolin 
as a as a as a character, you know, as an actor. And I don't think you get. I I don't see myself saying, you know, who else could have done this? You know, because yeah, like, I was fine with him doing it. I mean, I never saw the original. I couldn't see Old Brad Boy. Pitt trying to do that. <laughs> no, I don't think. I don't know. I think he probably could have pulled it off because he like, uh, him playing Aldo Apache. Like his, just like gruff. Don't give a fuck. Just be as nasty as possible. Mm-hmm. Attitude. I, I think he could have pulled it off for old boy, but like you said, I wasn't thinking. Man, someone else could have done a better job. Yeah, I was. I was content with it. I thought it was. I thought it was good. Not, but I already knew the spoiler, so I was, was. You know, the big twist in it, so I couldn't really put myself in that position of like like if I saw it for the first time be like oh my god holy shit this is crazy I didn't even really expect Sam Jackson to be in the movie I knew I knew Sam Jackson was in it uh kinda cool what old boy does to him though oh yeah like I'm just like watching like I thought I, I thought what was gonna happen like just from the previews like I thought he was just gonna fucking cut his head off yeah. No, that was, dude, that was pretty raw. <laughs> he, he he had the opportunity, and he uh, backed away. That was pretty cool. The fight scene after that was kind of cool. You could tell that even though I didn't see the original, I'm sure that fight scene's in it where he's making his way out. There, There is, it, they, they do, and they kind of, they kind of try to pay homage to it. Because the way the way in the Korean version they had like this scene where it was just filmed all in one shot, where they had all you know all the extras and the other gang members come in, and they did it all in one take, and it turned out awesome. That's I mean that's what they kind of did with that. Exactly. And you can tell just by the the way the camera was. They were moving from the parking lot and. Yeah, and the and they didn't take the shot off them, and they were going back and forth, and it was it, I could tell it was choreographed, like a fight scene. Maybe when when the original old boy was exactly was done because it wasn't it wasn't done like, uh, like the raid redemption or like Umbach or something like that where it's yeah. just like I mean it was still a hard hitting fight yeah it and, was a hard hitting fight that that they and for me to do a one shot take and then have because I don't even know how many times they did that shot because because I want to say it was a good solid two minutes of uncut uncut shooting yeah and that's a lot of choreography so i'll give them props for that yeah, definitely that yeah but uh all in all i do like i did like old boy though i thought it was very cool uh elizabeth olsen's fucking hot <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh i guess uh boob spoiler you get to see her boobs yes and her butt yeah true sweet, story sweet butt i'm still not gonna spoil the twist yes i won't either but I told my old man about it, and he's just like, you but, fucking watched that? Yeah, you get that look <laughs> like, what the fuck's wrong with you? It's like, yeah. well, I didn't expect it the first time I watched it, and now that I watch it the second time, I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with me? And I was like, you know what? I knew it. I didn't write it. It's a fucked up story. That's the point of it. It's just fucked up. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in the in the original, was it uh, pretty much the same reason why the guy was doing what he was? To, to it's been a while point. since I saw the original. Um, I think I, I think I, I Wikipedia like if I remember the original, the original you kind of you kind of wake up with his situation. You don't I don't th I don't remember him being mind mind erased the way he was in the beginning of the movie, like because uh, he gets captured and he's stuck for what twenty years. Yeah, I think the original was fifteen years. Well, and I think in the original they didn't wipe his mind and the they, they didn't brainwash him or do anything. To yeah, him. they, they, they just, just you like, wake up with him waking up in the box. Yeah. And I think, if I remember right, it's been, like I said, like 10 years since I watched the original. So, for me to watch it again would give me more credibility, in my opinion, for it. So, my opinion, because I do not remember the beginning, the beginning when he gets captured. I still didn't understand the significance of the, the hash marks, So, What do you mean? Like, with the girl with the umbrella, there was like... Hash marks like one two three four five one two. And I think there was only seven. I I don't know. I really didn't count. But then he put them on his, like he tattooed it on his forearm or his hand. I totally missed that. Maybe because I was I was just watching them for the story, but I didn't 
I didn't catch the hash marks. I don't know. I, I did. I, but I couldn't find a significance to the, to the hash mark because it's, it's a number. It didn't correspond with how many years he was captured or anything like that. And yeah. then I'm just like, and then he tattoos it on himself. You think that like there would be a reason for that, and it doesn't like explain that at all. There's probably something in, inside it that we're, I missed it. You caught it, and it, it probably cor- correlates to it or somehow. I just not thinking about it. I'm sure we could look it up. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna look it up, but yeah, I don't. Know, if I watch it again, like I'll, there's probably something I'll pick up on or some shit. Those, those, you know what? If I those hash marks are probably something like you could probably figure. It was probably for the twist. Those are probably if, in my opinion, because. I, remember, I know what you're talking about. The girl with the umbrella, umbrella yeah. when he first comes out in that field and beats up the football team. Yeah, she's the one that kidnapped him, too. Yeah. So it, it probably has a mark with, like, the twist of how it happened. You know, like, he could figure it out without having to help figure, find the people to help him figure out how to, you know, about his past. He could have he could have probably figured it out instead of going the distance, the, the, the work he went through to figure everything out. Yeah, there's probably like a simple explanation that he could have figured out pretty quickly instead of going the miles and doing but, all that dirty shit. But I mean, to sit there and eat the same amount of food all those years, and he figures it out by going to every Chinese store he could come across just to get the dim sum. That was crazy. Oh yeah, and I liked I liked how like he puked at everyone that it wasn't the one he was eating. Yeah, like this, and you don't see him eat the rest of the time. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine just fucking eating that shit every day? By the way, they feed him fucking dumplings and rice and was a quart of vodka every fucking I, day. I yeah. think so. My treat was is to keep his sanity. He he made he made a pet mouse and they served him his mouse the one time. Yeah, that was fucked up. <laughs> that was a treat. But yeah, old boy. I liked old boy. Uh, like, it's not getting very good reviews. Um, no, because it, it's a fucked up movie. I understand why critics will fucking slander it. Yeah, well, even, like, you, I, I, like, with the, like, I, which I kind of like about the Xbox One is, like, if you rent it, rent or buy something on there, it'll have, like, reviews from people, reviews people leave on Rotten Tomato. Nice. Uh, which is cool. So, like, it gives you that, uh, that thing, yeah. you know. Which is which I like is kind of like the whole encompassing of the one. Yeah. Well, uh, I just look on IMDb or. Oh uh, well, yeah, I look or, on IMDb. Or Flickster, and Flickster is connected to the Rotten Tomatoes. But, but yeah, people were just like, "Oh, it's just a fucking gore fest," and blah blah blah. Well, guess what? Gore movies were were great for people that like B movies. Yeah, I mean, like look, look, the Saw series lasted what six fucking movies? And they were horrible. The story was the stories. Well, the story. Depending on who did the story, the stories were good. <laughs> like this, I mean, the way they arced the story around was okay. Um, don't get me wrong. I like the creative, the creative methods of living or dying. Um, but overall, just for the acting and everything else, I was like, meh. Yeah, it was off and on depending on what movie you watch. You know, and like I watched all of them. I think, I think they lost it in the last three like the acting and like yeah, the story four, five, and six. i like i like how the the story like back came around and i don't care if i spoil this the last one's been out for years now yeah. but uh yeah they just it all comes back to to that doctor that cut his foot off Yep. you know so but yeah that was good but yeah i don't know and oh yeah we were talking about captain america uh yeah, I'm actually kind of psyched to see that. I, I, I'm gonna I, catch the midnight showing if I can. All right, yeah, I'll I'll see, I'll see what the deal is. I'll see if uh, AJ is gonna go Friday. He might, he might not. Uh, if not, maybe I'll hit up the midnight showing with you right Thursday. Up. But uh, yeah, definitely. And what I've heard is, oh, did I say that they're saying it's the best? Yeah, I did. Yeah, they yeah. Said it's supposed. To, be the best Marvel movie yet so far. So at the top of the Avengers would be fucking awesome. <laughs> Should be a good one. So I guess since we're moving on from Gore movies and that, we had the season finale of Walking Dead finally. Yes. What was your opinion? Uh 
There's two loose ends, which I'm pr pretty sure it'll probably be something pivotal uh, to how how they overcome their obstacle for the next season. Oh, the people of Terminus? Yeah. My loose end I have is, what the hell's Beth? Oh, the, oh three loose ends. Yeah. So, Beth is missing. Uh, and... Uh, What's her name? Carol and... Uh, Carol and Tyrese aren't there yet. No. Nope. And they're headed there. So, there's three. Beth, uh, I think they'll, it'll end up be like Carol's daughter and they'll find, find her that she's been killed or some shit. Yeah. Uh, so that kind of sucks. I kind of, like, I started liking her character. Well, I guess let's get, let's get up to speed then on Walking Dead. Because, uh, <clears throat> how did you feel about the, uh, I don't know, the Steinbeck ending to the episode with Carol and Tyrese and the two little girls? Okay, this is this is how I feel about that. Uh, fucking sucked that the psycho sister killed her little sister. Now I've been fucking pissed if Carol did not put a bullet in the back of that little girl's head. That that pissed me off. Like I got friends on like saying, "Oh, I feel bad for those girls." No, I feel bad for the youngest girl because she could have came out normal. Yes. Yeah, these girls are being brought up in a fucked up world, but it's it's literally Darwinism at its best. It's it's no longer like a, a livable society that we live in now, where you know if people are a little fucked up in the head or or anything like that, we can pawn them off to psychiatrists or put them in. But did in, you like how they how they closed the gap between like her coming clean with Tyrese and and the whole who was killing the rats or catching the rats? Yeah. The, the little girl's catching rats because the zombies are people too. We can feed the zombies. Yeah, fuck that shit. Yeah, and I don't think that's Darwinism. That's more of a the psychotic tick in your head that, you know, it's a learned thing that can be unlearned. She's still a child. She can be broken of it, but they didn't keep a close eye. And now, in my opinion... Yeah, but by that point, it was too far gone. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I, I, think, I think it was too far gone because you can't... You're, you're constantly fighting for your life. You can't sit these girls down, and Carol kept trying to sit that girl down and be like, listen, this shit's not right. You know, these people are dead. They're trying to kill you. And she's like, they talk to me, and blah, blah, blah. You ain't got, ain't <laughs> nobody got time for that shit. Well, you know what I mean? You're constantly moving forward, but also at the same time, that little girl walked off to go feed the one walker that was stuck on the tracks. It, if you ain't got time for that shit, you ain't got time to be letting that girl run off free. You know what I mean? Keep, keep keep her at your side at all times, and once she fucks up, you let her know. That's my opinion of it. But I just think they went for the pivotal role of fucking ripping off Steinbeck instead of instead of Lenny looking at the rabbits. Just look at the flowers. Just look at the pretty flowers, and then Carol just busting her in the back. Oh of the yeah, head. dude, I would have been so fucking pissed if they didn't kill her. I'm like, cause like I'm sitting there and uh, I'm watching it with my mom, and she's she's just like. She has to kill her. I was like, I'm going to be fucking pissed if, if she doesn't fucking kill her because she's going to eventually kill the baby. Well, she was almost. They got back just in time. Yeah. She was going to kill the baby. Eventually, she would have killed the baby and possibly tried killing Tyrese and Carol. Yeah. Had to have been done. It had to have been done. Well, and and I saw I saw Tyrese forgiving Carol, like, even when she said it. And I'm just like, oh, well, shit. Yeah. But, like, I well, think he, well, he realized, like, especially after Carol did what he she did and saw that she was like emotionally fucked up about it and well, she, she doesn't want to do this shit for pleasure or some sick sadistic shit well she wanted she, the group to live yeah she, she does wanted to what kill she the has to do but she was doing it with a well you also have to think they're trying to live as a society inside the prison now she's just willy nilly just running off killing these people like she like she made it like this big big thing like you're, you're killing essentially your friends because everyone in this in this little community, where you're all friends, you're you're it's adopting this family idea. Now the problem is 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 yes you're you're fighting to survive. Now when when the the hell what the fuck's his name from the other town comes over and regroups his people. Oh, uh, the governor. The governor comes mm -hmm. back in, fucking and and just fucks up the prison, and the, everyone's are scattered. You know. Instead of that community, like, functioning, and instead of, like, like, 
like when that first kid got sick and turned and started killing people in the prison, that's when you should have had like the little sit down talk. But because it's drama and TV show, I get it. It doesn't work that way. This is me being the critic towards it. Yeah. I'm not a writer, but no, but I guess this is me giving my two cents of like how it could be done. I'm sure other people would be sitting there going, well, how else do we rewrite this or do that? You don't. You just go with it and you're just like, and you take it for what it is. And, and it, for me, it's it, that started to turn my lack of interest. But at the same time, I like the zombies. I like the fucking the survival aspect of things. So... It leads on to leading on to where where it's going to, and I accept it for what it is. Now, I had an issue with the hill when Daryl got recruited by the hillbillies, and just if you claim it, it's yours. Because you know, in all actuality, those hillbillies would have been the survivors of the apocalypse. Doesn't matter if it was zombies, you know, a cold war upbringing, anything, because you know that they, they 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 tracked Rick. Rick Chavone and uh, Rick's son up until the last episode. Yeah. Yeah, I think probably, but they weren't good people, though. They weren't... No, I'm, I don't, I'm not saying that they uh, were good people. I'm just saying, they're, you want to talk about Darwinism, Darwinism, they will survive. Oh, yeah, they will definitely survive. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that... So you're saying, I don't know, what are you saying about Daryl joining up with those guys? Well, Daryl just went along with it because he was in a no-win situation. Instead of fucking accepting death, because he wants to find Beth, Yeah. he just went with them and tried to adopt. Daryl's trying to drop their, their lifestyle by, you know, fame. <laughs> you know, because he caught that at the end of the episode when he finds the, the candy bar or whatever the hell. Uh, it was a the, tomato. The, 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 toma- the yeah. plant. Yeah. But at the same time, you saw yeah. the candy wrapper. And in Daryl's head, I, I thought he maybe knew what it was from because he was with those people at some point in time. But who knows if they found that on the road or who they were tracking. Daryl knew in the back of his head he's tracking one of his own. I don't think he knew that. Well, you got to think about it. They all scattered, and they're all trying to find each other. So and essentially, he thinks and in the back of his head, he knows they're tracking someone he probably probably knows. Because... Huh. Maybe I. That's my opinion of it, because in all I, did, I mean, it, you know, he wants to find Beth, because yeah. he grew attached to Beth. Now, now all we know is it was a, it was a, what, a white Cadillac that took off with her. Yeah, it was like it was a Cadillac. I don't know if it was white or. Maybe I black, thought it was but, white, but I thought it was those hillbillies. Tell you I the did. Truth. I did too, but when you get to that one episode where you get to the you know with there all the hillbillies, you see the the cars parked in that garage that they stay in and they're all thinking you know when they beat that other guy down and they actually kill him if i remember right yeah they do kill him because you know to be taught a lesson well he goes well you get beat but i didn't expect them to kill him but they said it wasn't the first time they had to deal with him before yeah so i don't know but they were going to kill daryl uh when they caught up with him anyhow because yeah. he's he goes you're a liar so we're going to you gotta learn your lesson. He's, you know, talking shit to Rick, and he's like, "We're gonna kill you, and then Daryl, then your son, and then Michonne." You know. Well, I don't think they actually killed Daryl because I think the leader actually took a liking to him. No, he said they were gonna kill him. Oh, were they? Yeah. You know, hillbillies that only want to be hill. Oh, well, that's why they have sister cousins, right? Yep. So yeah, that was good. How'd you like uh, the transformation of Rick, though? Of just like accepting that, you know, this is this is what it is, you know what? Like now we have to be. We can try to be good people, but we do it to survive. We have to be brutal. Like when he just fucking rips that dude's throat out, you know, and, my, and then he stabs the fucking shit. <laughs> well, I don't know. With Rick's character, he's already killed his best friend in season two because he knows he's fucking losing it. Uh, he's trying to keep his shit to, he lost his shit when his wife died and started seeing her in fucking visions and the fucking telephone. Rick's just losing his sanity, and in my opinion, it's, he knows he want. we all want to see Rick as the leader figure, so I think they write it that way. Yeah. And so, in my opinion, 
Rick knows he needs to do what he needs to do because I mean when Herschel when when he lost Herschel, everything that was like commonplace to keep keep Rick at peace is gone. Yeah, I think that's why they were doing flashbacks too. And Rick acknowledged, and we'll see. That's what leads up to when Rick said, like, when at the last scene in the train car, you know, they don't know who they're messing with. Exactly. Yeah. Because they've all been together, except for the captain, uh, and the one girl. And and if I remember, right, I don't, I don't remember seeing uh, the scientist in the train car. He was in there. Was he in there? Yeah. Okay, I didn't catch that. But. But Maggie, the new girl that was fighting for the governor, was in there. Glenn, you know, and, and you know those guys. The fact that they made it to terminus, and he knows that those are his people. Like, I don't see it as Rick accepting more people. Like, these are my people, and I think now he's gonna go with the whole clan mentality. Like, like, I don't know how terminus is gonna turn out because the whole like, in my opinion, like, if they wanted to kill him, they could have killed them. Yeah. And they just corralled them. Like, they only shot at the feet. They never killed anyone. So it makes me wonder what the fuck Terminus is all about. I'm pretty sure, like... And this is just from reading, uh, like, some of the comic books and and playing the... I think the... The, walk, the, fifth, the video game? The, uh, the Telltale games. Uh, Terminus are cannibals. If you saw... Uh, while they were corralling them, they ran by a fenced area, and there was bones, human bones, in a pile. Not like they've been chewed on or something by walkers, uh-huh. but clean, like, as if for meat. Well, that's kind of interesting. I mean, in the sense that, holy shit, now we got to deal with cannibals now. Yeah. So, but- I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure those are walkers. Uh... Or, uh, cannibals. Um, I, it, don't quote me on that. I don't, but, yeah. But, they're, yeah, like, uh, like when we started talking about there's three loose ends. I, uh, because it makes you wonder, because in the episode before when Maggie and Glenn and them guys show up and the lady offers them, like, a pot of food. Yeah, where are they getting the meat? Well, you saw the episode with Carol, she shot the deer. Yeah. Oh, well, I had the opportunity to kill the deer, but never did. I mean... Like with the hillbillies, they caught rabbits. I mean, you can you can literally survive on you know the natural environment. Well, yeah, people have been doing it for thousands of years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you don't you never second guess what are they serving them. Like I remember when we go to the one room and they see all the grave you know the the people's names written down or whatever. Yeah. Like I I didn't think cannibal, cannibalism from that because. I can't remember what it is. Well, I, the only reason I'm saying it is just from Even, reading and, and playing the I, video I, I've never been a part of cannibalism, but if I yeah. remember right, even if we eat people as, you know, as a meal or whatever, there's something in our in our bodies that doesn't accept, like, there's a deficiency in our in our, in our our bodies that we won't accept people, like, as for, for sustenance. You like, have to get something from well, it. Well, we can eat it, but... What I'm saying is, like, it changes you. Like, you're, you're, there's a deficiency in something that'll change you. Not change you on a person. Like, like physically it changes you. Like, yeah. Uh, what is it? You've seen Book of Eli. Exactly. Like, those, like they can tell who, who are who cannibals yeah. because they, they shake. They get the shakes. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe it's, it's a deficiency in, yeah, like, you get something from it, you'll, you can survive, but you're not getting everything that you need. I mean... That's just on, like, you know, fabled lore, nothing looked up. Because, I mean, if you think about it, and the way our diet is as a society and all this, now this isn't so much geek stuff, but more of a, more of a holy shit, what the hell, health kick stuff. Like, like when we buy milk at the store, it's not people food, it's from a cow that gets dehomogenized and, and all that stuff. It goes through the process of being processed. Yeah. Whereas, you know, as, as we learned as, you know, survivors, you know, as mothers give birth to children, they have the ability to feed their child with, with women's milk. And I mean, naturally as people, we are lactose intolerant, but we learn to become tolerant of it by drinking milk every day. Like me, I don't really drink milk every day, but I knew, I, but the day that I do have dairy intake, it messes with my system. Yeah, I mean, I don't drink that much milk I, anymore, 
But we are also the only species on the planet that drinks another species milk. Well, it's the same. No, it goes in. Does it, it depends what culture you're in or whatever. Goat's milk. Be, like if you live out in the desert. Oh, it doesn't matter if it's from a goat or a cow. Yeah. Well, we're the only milk that we're technically supposed to drink is human milk. As yeah, when we're children the, from our mother. Because it has it the supplies nutrients. the nutrients and there's the colostrum in it that gives you your. You get, that's what provides the nutrients is the colostrum. Yeah, but we don't get that from other animals because it's not this. We're not we, genetically made up the same way to take in the well, same shit. I don't think there's a there's a human <clears throat> milking plant out there. I mean, I, don't get me wrong, sperm bank. <laughs> yeah. Well, fucking, I know fucking. You know, there's people in the drinking tea milk from. Uh, what are they called? Wet nurses or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wet nurse. But their whole but their whole thing is it's because it's it, they're they're only for children there. They're not there to become this or that or whatever. Yeah. I mean I think society's put it to like well if you're drinking breast milk past two years old or whatever the fuck it is, uh you know, it's it's fucking weird if you're drinking it from a human. You know, like we're just like, oh no, we need to drink milk from a cow or a goat. Well, because that's how we're raised, and I mean, I mean, after so long, a woman quits producing milk. You know what I mean? Like, like after a child's been given birth for so long, and they tend, and they learn how far along they've become grown, your body naturally turns it off. Yeah, it's just one of those things, and that's why we get milk from cows and everything else, because you know, not every female in the world is gonna be like. Yeah, just yeah, just turn it on. There you go. <laughs> Fucking got a take, tap. Take it straight from the tap, guys. <laughs> but no, yeah. Uh, so, anyways, Walking Dead. It ends up. I don't know how Trevor's is gonna be that. Now, so the. T- the t- you you know, there's gotta be a couple people, or at least one person that dies in the first episode of next season. There has to be getting out of there. I'm shooting for Rick. He's gonna die. He he ends up dying in the comic books. Uh... I don't know where whereabouts really, but uh, he does eventually get killed or dies. Well, which one and, it and is, it's but. expected because, but you know, if, if it were for me to, to throw off all the fanboys of Daryl Dixon, you know how many how many viewers will lose if they kill Daryl? Oh, they won't kill. Him. If Fair they enough. kill Daryl, I will laugh to the bank. Because uh, if because you know the minute they kill him, the minute Norman Reedus hasn't shown up on that show, they're gonna lose so many viewers. I'll also watch it. I don't give a shit. I mean, well, I like exactly. Norman. I like Norman Reedus, but he's not the defining thing. He's that, not the reason why I watch the show. I'm not yeah. like I need to see Daryl this week. Fuck Daryl. Every all people be like, "Hey, what else has Norman Reedus played in?" And they'll be like, "Uh, Walking Dead seasons one, two, and three. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you've never seen the Boondock Saints, or you know." Anything else that he's done? Yeah. Like, uh, what? Like, you're an asshole. So, I, yeah. That, yeah, that would be a huge slap in the face. I, I really wouldn't mind it. Uh, I'm sure he would go out like a badass, so. What? Well, uh, we'll see. But what, I, dude, I bet you they kill, like, Glenn or, like, Maggie or some shit. Well, I don't know, because they're going to be the purveyors of the future if they have a kid. Yeah, I don't if see if that If they shit, go with that whole canon. Oh, not canon, but if they go with that idea. That route, yeah. But... The, you know, it would really make me upset if they killed off Tyrese, because he's the only guy I know that got that when he left, abandoned, and got stuck with the two kids from the you know from the prison, and he's just running around with a hammer, just yeah, hammering. getting swarmed, and he just fucks them all up with a hammer. I mean, now, now that ain't badass, you know. Like fuck you, zombies. Here's I like a, Tyrese though. He's that's pretty much his role in the comic books too. And and you know, with Carol, Carol's so far the natural survivalist because. After she got ousted from the prison, guess what? They found her out around the prison. <laughs> not in, not walking around it, but just... Yeah, like so... standing in the area. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't... They're not going to kill off Tyrese because I think he's becoming a fan favorite. I bet you... I mean, because I think just, just from what it seems, people are warm, really warming up to Tyrese. And he could be stepping for Daryl, and they could kill Daryl off. <laughs> oh, if this happens, a lot of people will be upset. 
I'd be okay with that. I like Tyrese. Well, oh no, I, yeah, I'm, I'd be fine. I, like I said, I'm surprised they're all made it this long to begin with. Uh, I, I kind of wish they would have kept Michael Rooker in there, to be honest with you. Yeah, I don't know. Like, they they made him out to be a hero in the end, but he was just fucking he bad. He was a dick. Bad dude, yeah. He, like, was a, he was a bad dude that was a dick, and they glorified his... Because I think the way they did it that way is because he knew that he had values as racist as he was, and as because he was a, a good old boy. He might as well have been running around with the hillbillies. But in the end, like, when it came to his brother... Him and his brother get in a fight, and if his brother would kick his ass, he's like, oh, I guess I gotta follow suit then. So, I mean, he's what I put as, like, in the as in the, the neutral bad character category. Yeah. But if you, well, that's what the neutral part is. You kick his ass, and he's like, all right, I'll follow mine. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I could, I could see them, people falling in love with Tyrese and then killing Daryl off. But, dude, someone's gotta die in that first episode next season, though. Someone's got to. You can't make it out of that, no matter how, how they write it. Getting out of there and taking that place over, or even just escaping there, someone's got to die. I hate to say it, but for as long as those characters have been on there, that for making it to the next season, I didn't expect Herschel dying. I mean, I expected him to die at some point, but I didn't think it was going to happen in the prison. During the attack. I guess not. I... Like, I thought, I thought they might have killed Michonne off too that, that episode, but yeah, um, but you know Michonne's made it. I mean, granted, she only popped in that season three. Yeah, I mean they've killed they've killed people in a single season before, but they have they weren't like too relevant. Yeah, like well, I don't know. Like, there's plenty of characters that could have been dropped off, but didn't. Because who knows where the writers are taking it, and who knows where the canon ties in? Because, because you know they have the canon going with with the video game. I haven't played it. They they don't tie too much in. But what I'm saying is, at, at some point, because it is part of the Walking Dead series, they could tie it in. Yeah. And so, it's just one of those things that it could work in, you know. Who knows who could play that character? Because in the game, did they make it the Terminus? Yeah. Uh, the, in, in 500 Days? And that, that'd be like part part two or whatever? It wasn't in 500 Days. It was in like... Uh, all in the first series? Yeah, it was in the first series. And they were cannibals and it was all fucked up. And you got like this, some Zambambos come in and murder people. And then, you know, the, your character kills some people and... They find out it's all a lie and shit. So, that's uh, that's why like I think they're gonna be. Well, obviously we know they're bad, but that's why I think they're cannibals. Gotcha. Uh. But yeah, dude, someone's gotta die. It might even be like Carol when they show up. I mean, he did bury those fucking guns on the outside of the prison though, too. That's true. So. We don't know, man. We do not know. You know what I'm wait wondering? Wait till next October. I wonder if they'll ever bring up the... I, I I know it's like probably a moot point, but there's the people that followed the governor. That Remember in the where it showed the episode of the governor and his and his own friends left him for dead? Mm-hmm. Like, like he woke up and his buddies were gone? What if they come, what if they come across them in Terminus? Or, you know, at, like... Like, who knows where they're running around doing? Like, in all all actuality, the world's actually pretty big. Like, like we're just following the one group from place to place to place. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the governor had his town going on, and, you know, now we have Terminus. Then we run into the captain with the, the lady, the one lady, and the scientists that are trying to get the VC. So, who knows how many, like, different factions are running around, or different people that have... That, that'll come together. Yeah, I think that guy's bullshit, by the way. I don't think he's a real scientist. Just looking at him, you're just like, this guy looks... Cool. I don't know. He followed the map to get people, to get him to the, to wait at the train station, to wait for, wait for Glenn. 
and yeah. was, and like they didn't make it through, but they ran across Maggie, and that that was a kind of that was kind of fucking cool how that happened. Yeah, I don't know. I think that I think he's a smart dude, but I think he. I mean, he's don't, pulling some type kind of bullshit. I don't know. I, I unless, could be wrong. Unless they tie it into the fucking first season with the CDC, because when the CD got the CDC, he's like, I know what happened. This is what happened, and that's what you know. You know what I mean? He pretty much said it's our fault for this shit going down, and they fucking blow up the CDC. So, what does this guy know that the CDC didn't know? It's like, wait, wait a minute. Yeah. So. So yeah, it's gonna open up There's a lot of shit that can happen next season. I kind of liked the season then. Uh, it was all right. Nothing. I expected someone to die in this episode, but they didn't kill anyone off. Nope, they survived. That's why I think they're gonna do it when they start next season. And this is my thing. You know how in season two, Carol's looking for her daughter or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't find her after the scatter and all that. I kind of wonder if that's going to be the same way. Instead of finding her in some bar, and they're like, oh yeah, we found a girl. There she is. Yeah, I think... And Norman Reedus is going to go through the whole thing he did when they found her, and like, who's his shit? Just not as bad as Carol did. And well, whatever. yeah, you gotta remember that's Maggie's sister, though, too, so... Exactly. Oh, so it'll be Norman Reedus, and then Maggie's going to find her and be like, my sister! And yeah. And that fake American accent. Yeah. <laughs> I still so can't she, believe as old, she's as old as she was because she was in the uh, season of Supernatural. Yeah, isn't she like 30 or something? Or? Something, but she looks really young for her age. Yeah, well, that's like they get 30 somethings to play actors to play fucking teenagers and shit. So. Mm-hmm. They got lucky. Alright, we're coming to the end here. We're up over an hour. <laughs> Yeah, we hit it. Now, is there anything else we missed? I can't think of anything. We got Titanfall. We got we got Walking Dead, Captain America. Anything coming up after that? I mean, nothing. Nothing too soon. None Spider-Man till, will be coming out. That's gonna be summertime, here. and then we then we got uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy too. Yeah, this summer. That's that's gonna be a huge thing. I'm looking forward to. <clears throat> You're welcome. So, all right, we're out of here. Take it easy.